today's Power Nation Extra is all about the chassis dyno. We're going to show you how to properly strap the car down, what connections are needed between the dyno and the vehicle, and how to make a pull. Now Mark from Detroit Muscle is on his way down here with the Chevelle they just wrapped up with. And the cool thing is, Pat and I built the engine that's between the frame rails. It's an engine we called in-house Power Mouse, a 406 cubic inch small block Chevy that had a bad boy attitude. A dark little end block was the foundation. Secured to it were AFR 220 eliminator heads, and an Edelbrock Super Victor intake topped it off. We dynoed it in two forms. First, naturally aspirated. Then we attached the intercooler piping, installed the belt, and made some boosted poles with an F1A Pro Charger. The results were impressive on 15 pounds. To operate the dyno, it's best to have two people setting it up. Having someone outside the vehicle to guide it in makes it easier to get the rear wheels centered cleanly on the roller. Be certain you have straps rated for the job. We get ours directly from DynoJet, so there is no questioning their capabilities. One of the important things is not only to hook to something that's solid on the car, to make sure that the straps are not near anything hot like the exhaust. You sure don't want to burn through one in the middle of a run. Anytime you strap down anything using a ratchet strap, always have plenty of strap wrapped around the ratchet spool. This will ensure a good clamp load that does not loosen during use. Oh yeah. Next, Mark connects the tack pickup directly to the plug wire then attaches the ground to the AC compressor's bracket. Another ground is attached to the chassis of the Chevelle, then to the dyno platform. Something else that's really important when you're dynoing a vehicle is making sure all of the vehicle's information is in the dyno computer correctly. Now this includes all the notes about the car, that way if you ever go back to look at data, you know exactly what you're looking at. When a car is sitting on the chassis dyno stationary like this, there's no air moving into the air dam. So having a squirrel fan like this is a must. Now the main goal on a boosted application like this is to keep the IATs or intake air temperatures down. That's where power is made. Tire pressure is important. We like to run between 34 and 36 PSI. Low pressure will rob power and too much will cause the tire to fail. With the car squared up on the roller and some heat in the differential, trans and engine oil, this Chevelle is ready for a pull.